Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to use DigitalOcean to launch your dev projects. But before we can do that, we have to actually have some code first. So I'm actually gonna create a Python Flask app because that's pretty much my favorite thing to create. And we're gonna then deploy that to the DigitalOcean cloud. So let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna launch my favorite editor, which is PyCharm. I'm gonna create a new project and I am gonna do a Flask project. And that will take a second to create. Once that project's created, you can kind of see our Flask code here. I'm gonna come over here to my terminal and I'm gonna CD into the directory and then I'm gonna source the virtual environment. All right, looks good. So now I'm gonna to try to run Flask. Yep, looks like it worked. So let's test it out by opening up a browser window and going to localhost port 5000. Oh, and there we go, hello world. So that looks like it worked. Now, in order to get this app to DigitalOcean, we have to actually make sure that the environment is portable. And to do that, we need to make sure that whatever dependencies were installed in this virtual environment are available on the DigitalOcean VM. So to do that, I'm going to do a pip freeze and look at the dependencies that are available in this app. So then I'm going to take the pip freeze output and I'm going to save it in requirements.txt just in case we need to install those later. All right, that's about all we're going to do here. So now I'm going to close PyCharm and I'm going to actually open up DigitalOcean. So I've already created my DigitalOcean account. I gave them my credit card, which was required, and then they dropped me into this window, which says, get started with a droplet. Droplets are what they call their VMs. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to select a base Ubuntu image. Just for the record, you could come over here to Marketplace and put a WordPress image or a LAMP stack. So any kind of template uh, with different dependencies that you might be needing is available in the marketplace. But again, for now, I'm just going to create a, a very basic droplet with the Ubuntu operating system because the Flask app is going to have everything we need to run. So $5 a month. <laughs> we do not want to add any block storage. We have enough on our root volume. We're going to launch this VM in the San Francisco 2 region or AZ availability zone. We do not need a private VPC network. That's if we want two VMs or more to communicate with each other on a private network. Um, and we are going to add our SSH key. It looks like mine's already added. So I'm just going to re-add it just to show you guys. So if you have already created a uh, SSH key, you'll have a RSA SSH key here, your public key. You want to copy that public key and you want to give it a name. Oh, I guess it knows the, the key, so it won't let me add more than one. But anyway, that's how you would do it. I added mine, and then we want to go ahead and create the droplet. Actually, I'm going to call this Flask, Flask Demo. All right, so now that uh, droplet's creating, that'll take a minute, so I'll fast forward the video. Okay, our droplet is finally done being created, and we got a public IP address here of 159.65.67.253. So the first thing we want to do in our terminal is we want to copy our code using SCP, secure copy, um, to the VM. Oh, I forgot to say what we're going to copy. We're going to copy the Flask project to the VM. You have to be root. That's where your key is set up. Colon just tells it, hey, here's the path. So here we go. Yeah, about the fingerprint, and it should start copying. Again, this is going to take a second, so I'll fast forward the video. All right, the copy just finished. So now I am going to SSH into that same VM. And there's our Flask project folder. I'm gonna CD into that. And now I'm just gonna try a Flask run and that's gonna fail. It says Flask not found, but it can be installed. Okay, uh, although this is telling us to install it on the system. Uh, that's not really what I want to do. Oh, actually, I forgot to source the virtual environment anyway. So 
source vm uh, bin activate and now let's see what the error is so it's still saying flask is not found or installed so i think what we want to do is we actually want to install flask through pip uh, through python so first we need to uh, update once you get a DigitalOcean vm you need to do an update because without an update the repos don't work so again i'll fast forward i'll be back in a second Okay, now that that finished, I also have to do an upgrade on all the uh, packages now. So apt upgrade dash y, and we'll be back in a second. All right, awesome, that finally finished. So now we're actually ready uh, to start installing the dependencies for our app. So to do that, we're going to type pip install requirements.txt, and I think this is going to fail because I don't think pip is installed. But let's try it. Pip is not found. So how do we install pip? We do an apt get python pip3. Uh-oh. Uh, sorry. apt install python pip3. Is that right? Oh, unable to locate package. Uh, I thought that was going to work. Hmm. What is going on? Why, uh, we updated everything. Let me see. Let's make sure we have Python. Okay, we have Python 3. Oh, do we have pip 3? Did I not type that? apt get or apt install python3 dash pip. Does that work? Oh, that's what I was supposed to do. Okay. Sorry about that. Mistakes is what makes demos better anyway. You get to see people learn on the fly and see how they troubleshoot. Without that, I mean, the videos to me are quite boring. So we'll leave that in. All right. So now we have pip installed, we can start to install dependencies. So now what we want to do is pip3 install dash r requirements. This should install all the requirements needed for this project. Perfect. That looks like it worked. Now we can do a flask run. Perfect. Now our flask app is running up in the DigitalOcean cloud. The problem is it's binded to localhost and we're not going to be able to reach it. So we need to tell the flask app to bind to the uh, sort of wildcard address so that it binds to all ports, or sorry, all um, IP4, IPv4 interfaces, and then we need to do port 80. All right, now it's on the right port. So now if I come over here to my browser, I should be able to just hit this IP address and see, hello world, we got it. So that's it. That's how you get your basic uh, Python Flask web app up and running in DigitalOcean. Now I will say that the basic dev server for python oh it looks like oh, it looks like just by launching this vm on port 80 look how many uh, ips are hitting it so you got to be careful with with cloud man as soon as you put something out there people are trying to attack it in any case um this is just a basic app you don't want to use the flask web development server it's just for development if you were actually using this for production you'd want to switch your your actual wsgi server to either g unicorn or uh, apache or something else so we'll do another video on that later so that's it guys that's how you set up a python flask app in DigitalOcean's cloud i hope you enjoyed this video uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to see me do videos on other topics, just let me know in the comments below, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for tuning in.